To finish off this unit on surveillance, I want to look at a few national health surveys, kind of the big three, two from Canada, one from the United States, that survey uh, the population, the entire population, or sample the entire population, to get a sense of the health of Canadians or Americans. So probably the gold standard of our national survey here in Canada is something called the Canadian Health Measure Survey. And as the name implies, what's great about this survey is it actually measures certain factors. It is a survey that is a joint effort by Stats Canada, Health Canada, and the Public Health Agency of Canada. And a lot of the data that is produced on this is actually found on Stats Canada website. Um, what they do with this survey is they survey a nationally representative sample of only 5,000 people, really small percentage of the population, um, and with a fairly large age group as well. They have different cycles of this, so they run this every few years. And one of the goals here is to see how things change over time and to get this database that we can keep looking at, let's say, health trends or what are some priorities as far as health that we need to look at. Okay. There is in this unit, if you look down from this video, there is a video on the Canadian Health Measure Survey that gives you a better understanding of what they actually do. Um, there's two components to it. There's a household survey, which would like go to your house and ask you questions. And there's also a, a mobile clinic where they take samples, like blood samples, for instance, where they can measure like, let's say, vitamin D levels or other kind of blood blood related levels of things in order to get a sense of um, of those factors okay so like i mentioned there are these household surveys uh letters first sent through the mail and then they come to your house and they use this computer so someone comes in and they use a computer to input the, your responses um random selection of of respondents and the response rate is pretty high, like super high, 90% response rate. Okay, so that's one part of it, the household interviews and the questionnaire. And there are also these mobile examination sites. So if you ever see this little uh, bus looking thing <laughs> sitting outside of some place, that is like the collection center. Okay, they do physical measures and lab measures. So like I said, they take blood tests, but they can also measure things like weight, um, etc okay for this one unsurprisingly the response rate is a little bit lower but honestly that's still a super high response rate okay so some of the limitations of the canadian health measures survey is that it doesn't include uh, people living in the three territories and it doesn't include people living on reserves and i uh, it's a hard one because it's some of the people living on reserves don't want these people coming in. That's They don't want them taking their blood, and I can fully understand that. Um, the issue from a health promotion standpoint, though, is that, that we don't always have great data about those populations. And when we talk about like the health of Canadians, it often excludes these populations. So um, it's it's a bit problematic, um, but there are other surveys that specifically look at these populations too. That's important to remember, okay? So full-time members of the Canadian Forces are excluded and um, certain populations and residents of more remote regions are excluded too. So it is representative, but not fully representative, okay? I love the Health Canadian Health Measures Survey because when I'm making a class, when I'm like doing my lecture slides for a class, I often find data from this survey to support like the current state of a health behavior or a health um, or a disease or something else in order to, um, you know, build a narrative about that particular factor. Okay, so um, we've actually already seen some results in the Canadian Health Measures Survey. So we talked about like some of the participation report card um, from the, when we talked about physical activity in children and youth. Some of that data came from the, the, the Health Measures Survey. Okay, so like giving us a grade of F for moderate to vigorous physical activity and finding that less than 20% of people are active. This is measured data from the Canadian Health Measure Survey. Okay, so I just put this up there to give you a sense of what some of the data that's coming out of there, there is. Okay, another major survey here in Canada is something called the Canadian uh, Community Health Survey or the CCHS. Um, and this one is a cross-sectional survey that is not measured. 
Okay, so it's decent in the sense that we, we can keep sampling a large population and get a general sense of certain um, certain factors and the because it's not measured the data is not as good as the Canadian health measure survey that we saw before okay the last survey that I want to go over is one that you'll see a lot if you're ever looking at data from the United States and it's the NHANES the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey it started as the National Health Examination Survey, but then they started looking at nutritional factors too, which is great for me, having just written a nutrition textbook, because a lot of the data that I got, uh, as far as American or even sometimes Canadian, because it's similar, um, nutrition factors came from this particular study. Okay, So they have different rounds of this study. It's been going on since the 70s, and it involves a physical exam and clinical measurements and tests as well. So it's closer to the Canadian Health Measure Survey and that they're actually measuring things. Okay, And this is part of the, uh, the Center for Disease Control. They're part of the ones that administer and run and, and publish some of the data on this. Okay, But I really wanted to bring these up because these, like I said, are the big three that are data collection programs that allow us to get a sense of what's going on as far as the health of Canadians or Americans go because when we know the current status we can say hey we need more money for this we can talk to we can start advocating uh, the government for more you know efforts towards a particular area or we can say, you know what, we need to change the nutrition recommendations. We need to change the nutrition recommendations for vitamin D because people are actually not getting enough of it. Okay? We need to change the Canadian food guide to reflect that or nutrition labels to reflect that. So it's really good to help us making for making decisions. Um, and it's also, these are really important surveys for research as well. Okay, to really understand what the main concerns are and where we should focus our efforts. <laughs> it's also important for research because in the beginning of every single journal article you ever, ever read, it talks about the current state of that particular thing it's looking at. Like for instance, obesity is a major problem in Canada and it affects X amount of people. That typically comes from the Canadian um, uh, Health Measures Survey or the, uh, the Canadian Community Health Survey. <laughs> so we need that data in order to often build an argument as to why we're doing what we're doing as well. Okay, so that's the basic point of surveillance and I uh, hope you enjoyed this unit. See you in the next one.